Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 116 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. I'm going to start out this one with something a little special and that is last night during Strange World I spoke with uh, United States Army Master Gunner Brian Burton and he was one of my subject matter experts and he and I were discussing ballistic tables notably Navy guns and artillery and tank rounds and how we have heard from various members of the military you know Army Navy Air Force Marines uh, sniper instructors you name it we talked to all of them and they all said the same thing uh, in previous shows, which was, yeah, we've heard of the tables that talk about how that people that shoot long range, not just snipers, but much, much further, you know, the 20, 30, 50 miles, everything from cannon fire to missiles. They, they've heard of the rotation of the earth tables and the curvature of the earth tables, but they never take them into account. And so we actually got a hold of some of those tables. Uh, one of them was naval guns from, the, from World War II, and then artillery tables from the Gulf War, and then modern day tables from tanks. And yes, indeed, if, you, if it, that part is true. You can look in there and they do have ballistic tables that... Uh, try to account for the rotation and or the curvature of the earth however they aren't used they're ignored and uh, brian burton is saying you know he was looking at one of these tables going i've never seen this thing before ever and we were talking we were discussing the questions of when does something become a projectile when does it have to take into account the curvature and the rotation of the earth uh, like for example uh, we you've heard this discuss, discussed in several different things uh, you know, whether it's Globusters or Jaronism or whoever, which is uh, airplanes, you know, they, you know, they fly at 500, 600 miles an hour. Do they have to account for the rotation of the earth and the curvature of the earth? And we've never heard anyone account for that. And then we were saying, well, when, when does the plane become fast enough? And we were talking about the Concorde that ran from 1976 until the early 2000s. And the Concorde flew at Mach 2 which is faster than a lot of artillery rounds and faster than, uh, you know, quite a few missiles. So we, did the Concorde, how did the Concorde adjust in its transatlantic, transatlantic flights? How did it adjust for the rotation of the Earth? In 1976, remember, GPS wasn't even invented until the mid-1990s by the United States military. So how did that happen? Anyway, I'm, I know I'm taking a while to frame this, but after the show was over, literally within 10 minutes after that show was over, I got an email from a military man, and I won't mention his last name, but I, and the email's not very long, but I've got to read it, so this is what I'm going to open with. And uh, if you guys want to clip it out or send it to whoever, I, I think it's very important. And uh, if you want the details of the email, I'm more than happy to uh, send it to you, although I will not send you, uh, you know, for privacy's sake, he sent me his entire resume. Uh, I will not divulge that, but I've, I've got to read it because it's very important. Um, and it goes a little something like this. Uh, Mark, my name is Corey. Again, I won't live, give his last name. Uh, I have been listening to your show and enjoy it very much. I have attached my resume only for your background knowledge of my experience for review. With regards to artillery ballistics, we have never accounted for Earth's curvature or rotation. The current ATP 3922, however, does list a correction factor for the rotation of the Earth. This is hidden in a shift factor for artillery pieces firing out of traverse of beyond normal left and right limits. Typically, the center is 3200 with 200 mils left and 200 mils right of traverse, our main weapons firing range. Anything beyond these limits, 3000 to 3400 mils, are out of traverse. A weapon shift is required, which they have listed or hidden in the ATP as a correction factor for the Earth's rotation. This is incorrect. This is never used in my 23 years in the United States Army field artillery or as a defense contractor working on weapons live fire firing ranges. Additionally, we have never used the so-called Coriolis factor, nor have I seen it used on military weapons live fire ranges. I have written 
firing range SOP, which is standard operating procedures, for all the live fire weapon ranges in Kuwait Udari range complex. There are over 30 different firing ranges from tank, artillery, mortar, rocket, sniper, and small arms ranges. Best regards, Corey. And then he sent me his resume. So uh, you science people out there, uh, un unless this man is a bold-faced liar and he knows what he's talking about, uh, please tell me how this is how this is incorrect. And we've heard this time and time again from the subject matter experts in the military, which is they've all heard about the, the, the rotation of the earth and the curvature of the earth, but it is never factored into the firing solutions. And this guy's fired them all. So where is it? It's not there. There you go. And I'm going to save this one, and uh, I may use this as, as part of different things because I think it's really important that uh, the people listen to that one. Anyway, that one was uh, just yesterday, but let's jump back down to Saturday. This one's called Time Travel. Mark just found out about your love of time travel shows, movies, and ideas. Me too. Have you watched Primer or Primer? I think it's still free on Netflix. Also, the show Travelers is really good. 12 Monkeys, Orson Welles' Time Machine, and the remake, so on and so forth. What are some of your favorites? Always looking for another good take on the concept. Interesting to note, most not all time machines involve things spinning very fast. Where did that come from, I wonder? Been pondering that for a while now. Thanks for everything. Peace. And that's from Jonathan. Uh, favorite time travel movies? Boy, uh, off the top of my head, my, my favorite is probably one that explores different avenues of uh, alternate futures. So uh, a good one would be, you know, if you want a funny one, which was, it was more interesting than funny, and I think Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. I thought that was brilliant, a mid-90s movie. And, uh, and of course, Time Machine. And I, I love all time travel movies. I think they're all done really, really well. Um, because they, they explore possibilities. Even Looper was, was interesting, even though I, I hate, you know, I, I, Looper now leaves a bad taste in my mouth because the director of that went on to destroy Star Wars with The, uh, the Last Jedi. Uh, not, to, not to dwell too much on that. The, uh, my favorite time travel movie probably, and you get some people get like, no, no, it can't be, just because it has Ash, Ashton Kutcher in it, is um, The Butterfly Effect. And... I'm not going to condemn him because, I mean, yeah, lots of different people could have probably played that role because uh, it was about the story and it was very, very interesting. And that was the butterfly effect, how little things, if you had to go back in time and change things, what would you change? And did that change affect other things? Did it take you down a different path? And it showed what his life would have been drastically different in, in just by making these little, at this pivotal moment, in his childhood, how these these paths would have branched out into different uh, alternative futures. Thought that was fascinating. So anyway, thank you for that uh, question. I always love uh, uh, movie questions because I've absorbed so much media in my life. This one's called Check Out the Titanic Replica. Mark, China is building a Titanic replica. When it's finished, it would be a perfect spot for the Flat Earth Meetup. <laughs> interesting check out the images nearly 100 identical and that's from james yeah look as much as i'd like to be impressed by the the titanic replica i'm not so much and that's because when james cameron did his mid-90s movie titanic he he made a replica that was almost full size I mean, and the details were flawless. Uh, it spent so much. I mean, you know, everyone thought that movie was going to uh, sink him forever. And a we'll little play on words there. Uh, because it's like, who would want to watch the, the movie Titanic? And it turns out he made a, a wonderful romantic love story and launched Leonardo DiCaprio. And uh, it, was, it was an interesting movie. And I still know people to this day that will not see it, mostly guys, because they say, well, I know how it ends. It's like, yeah, you know the Titanic sinks, but watching the spectacle, spectacle of it was amazing. So anyway, China building the Titanic, eh, what are they going to do with it anyway? It's in China. So is it going to be a tourist attraction for them? Maybe. This one's called Spectre Russia's Only Telescope Not Responding. That's from the BBC News. Mark, here we go again. I struggle to get a Wi-Fi signal to my back garden. Kind regards, Adam from the UK. And yeah, it's a story in the BBC. Let's open it up. And yeah, Russia's only space telescope is not responding. Russia's, it's no longer responding to commands from Earth. Officials say it. It's a short little tiny article. It's barely even a paragraph. 
and why and then the story doesn't mean anything the story is only there to reinforce space that's all it is they don't even care if you read the article all it is is well you know a space telescope because we're in space and you're not this one's called eight miles deep it's, uh, hi mark i recently came across this picture my son drew circa 2000 while in school where apparently carrot top and drag taught him the earth was a globe much smaller than the sun composed of the crust outer core and core feel free to use it as you see it uh and that's from rose thank you rose it's awesome this one's called antarctica midnight sun hey mark this is mark from marysville Anyway, after listening to your last show, you had commented that the midnight sun in Antarctica is a weakness to the flat earth theory. I think that's what you said. Anyway, right after the show was over, I looked over in the column next to it, and Jared had a vid called Antarctica is not what you think, and it totally blew the midnight summer sun thing out of the water, showing supposed footage from Antarctica of a 24-hour period with no sun, but there are clearly pieces of footage missing, and the times are wrong, meaning they fake the footage. Just saying. That's from Charles. Yeah, I, I know all about Jared's stuff, and... I'm not saying that it disproves flat earth, not, not in the slightest, but it is out of all the points we've got out there, it's probably the weakest uh, because, because we just don't have enough information from Antarctica, which is what Jaron was trying to point out, which was we just don't have enough data because between the Antarctic Treaty and the hostile environment, we, there's just not a lot of people that are down there shooting footage. Uh, compared to everywhere else in the world, you know, every, everywhere else, you have flat earthers that are going to just about every body of water and shooting footage all over the place. But Antarctica, tough to get to. And so it's kind of up in the air of what's happening down there. And again, you know, the midnight sun, you know, whether or not it's happening, it, 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 again, not saying that it disproves flat earth in any way, shape or form. I'm just saying that of all the arguments we have, uh, it is it is not my favorite, not at all, which is why I focus on other things. Moving on, this one's called, I can prove that the theory of flat earth is wrong and help you stop spreading false info. Ooh, this is nice. I don't get many of these. Mark, if the earth is flat, everything in this universe should also be considered flat. Oh boy, not going to help you. Uh, which then means we should not be able to see by our definition up. And in fact, if the Earth does not curve, we should be able to see all the planets in a perfect line. Since without a curve, there is no logical reason for rotation of our planet or any other bodies in the solar system. Also, it should always stay day since the sun would never rotate, nor would the Earth because once again, no curve means the sun doesn't move or the earth. I hope you understand and can stop spreading false info to your dozens of fans, only dozens, uh, who actually are gullible to your hoax. <laughs> oh, and that's from Zoltan. And his last name is G-Y-O-N-G-Y-O-S-S-Y. -S -S hmm. Well then. Uh, sorry, the, those questions are old, old news, and you, uh, seriously, using the argument that oh, we, everything we see in the sky is a sphere, and the time zones, and sun everywhere. Sorry, I've heard that for years. Got it covered. Thanks, though. Moving on, this one's called My Mount Rainier Shots Tonight from Oak Harbor. Nice night here. Oh, yeah, that's from Dan Faso. He said it to a few people, and uh, it's one of my listeners. He lives on uh, lives in the north end of the island, actually, and we've met several times. He was at the uh, went to the documentary premiere up in um, the Washington premiere, anyway, up in Bellingham, Washington. So cool! Thank you for that. This one's called "New Fe Song." I think you will really like. Hey, Mark. Hope is. Hope all is well, brother. I released a new song for the research communities with a really good message. I think you'll appreciate. Check it out. Thanks again, uh, Brian Steve Lee. And I will click on the link. Hopefully it loads really fast. And did I give it a... I hadn't given it a thumbs up yet. Uh, the Bridge Truth Music by Brian S. Steve Lee from Dose of Reality. And his YouTube channel is called Brian Steve Lee. And sure. Cool. You know what? I'm going to subscribe to him and I'm going to like it. And I will make a comment when I get a chance. So I'll put this thing in my to-do pile. And we'll move on. This one's called Tom Tom Has Made It to Mars. 
Mark, here we go again. They are banging the drum. And that's from Adam in the UK. And he sent me a, uh, is that a Snapchat? What is that? It's a, it's an image. And it says, oh, it's on Tom. I don't know what Tom Tom is. Uh, New Year's discounts. In 2018, Tom Tom made it to Mars. More than 4.3 million miles of new roads covered in 2018. More than 37.2 million miles total roads now covered. Equals one trip to Mars. It's really awesome. I don't know what Tom Tom is. Some somebody will have to let me know. Fill me in. But thank you for that. It's really cool. This one's called Truth Movement in Berkeley, California. Yesterday, Mark William here. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> Love formal introductions. Were you aware of anyone in the Flat Earth Movement who went to the Truth Rally in Berkeley yesterday on uh, January twelfth? Uh, my friend and classmate went yesterday and posted this eight minute clip on the way and also streamed live while, while the event, he has been extremely active with chemtrails, vaccines, child trafficking. Oh, by the way, if you're going to say trafficking, it's uh, T R A F F I C K I N G. Uh, now flat earth and most recently the assault and destruction of paradise, California in our backyard. Actually, I had thought about the paradise fire as a subject. I would, would have called it. To Stranger World last Tuesday, it uh, would have gave me something to talk to David about as he was not shy about speaking on the San Bruno neighborhood fire last year. I think that's where it was, or was it San Jose? Anyway, I wanted to call in but had no specific subject to bring up with David. I still sort of feel bad about calling into Jaronism a month ago. Uh, month or so ago and not acknowledging David when I talked to Jaron about the closed system the human body is that allows CPR to work. You see, I believe the same must be true concerning our world if jet streams, wind currents, and weather must work. I am also a certified CPR instructor on top of everything and have been for the last 15 years. Anyway, may you have a blessed day as you tackle the treadmill. Peace, William. Uh, otherwise known as Who Wakes You. P.S. If someone in the community did go to Berkeley, would you mind sending this short clip? Not 100% sure of the passenger with Austin. Some of his mannerisms and thought patterns seem, shall we say, sporadic. I see Austin is not quite sure either. Okay. Thank you for that. This one's called a different one. Uh, 60, 65 activists in Berkeley yesterday. Oh, same guy. Sorry, I promise this is it. Just a link uh, to a photo my friend Austin took while inside yesterday. Cool. Right on. Glad there were a bunch of activists. Uh, 2019 is going to be such a massive year for activism. And if you haven't checked it out already, uh, look up um, uh, Roxanne Glenn, the globalist denier, or the global denier. Uh, she's helping organize a massive trip over across the UK and Europe where they're going to be going to a whole bunch of towns covering, I think, like 14,000 kilometers and uh, stopping by and, and, you know, spreading the word, which is going to be oh so great. This one's called Picture for Slideshow. Hi, Mark. I saw this, this image. Might be a nice piece of earth for the slideshow. Now tell us how the earth is flat. Greetings, Pim. And yes, Pim, I've seen this. Uh, it is a woman with what I believe is a, it, well, it is a, it is like a spandex outfit, but it's, it's a Mercator map turned into spandex. And uh, I think it's a little bit Photoshopped, uh, but no, I can't use it. it I'm sorry. It's a little, sorry, just a little bit out of my comfort zone, but thank you for that. And you guys can look it up. All you have to do is look up a girl with uh, map spandex and you'll, you'll find it on online. It's easy to find. This one's called Dimensions. Mark, do you think alternative dimensions exist? Do you have any explanation? I have thought of after death being timeless. The great throne judgment happens for all, but there is not a wait for it. I cannot explain, but it is like heaven and I cannot explain where it is. Now I believe in flat earth and you saying we are in a building or can we say a dimension? Thanks, Don. Uh, yeah, yeah, Don. I, I do think I do believe in other dimensions. Absolutely. If you believe, 
and I don't want to get into too many, too many complex things. You know, I promote flat earth because it's easy for people to understand. And I've been sort of throwing in the fact that we're, you know, we're not just in a dome, but we're in a building. And if we are in a building, there is a high degree of probability that it is um, digital in nature, electric in nature, that uh, if you want to use the word simulation, that's fine. Uh, I know other people say, well, you know, simulation cheapens it because then you're talking about the matrix of the 13th floor or other movies or, you know, going all the way back to the 70s, a world on a wire that was done in Germany. I don't think it was, I don't know if it was ever dubbed in English, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and that is if, yeah, if we are in a building, uh, could we be in another dimension? Yes. And if anyone ever argues that, and I'm not saying that discounts God in any way, um, we give God the tools that are available to us in our own mind. Back in the day, we would say that God, you know, had a divine hammer and chisel. And then as we got power tools, well, we gave him better and better tools. And now I am absolutely 100% convinced uh, that God is a programmer. God is a developer because everything is digital. And if you think I might be um, uh, diminishing the, the, the awe and power of God, no, I am not. Look at three things you have to look at. One is the double slit experiment which has been going on, not the old version, not the old Thomas Young experiments from, from hundreds of years ago, but the modern versions going all the way up to the early 2000s with the, the single electron gun, which is the, the, the double slit experiment says nothing exists unless you're looking at it. And that didn't even make sense. That the, the, the interesting thing, what I, what I love of the double slit experiment is that for years and years, we talked about it in schools, but we didn't understand what it fully meant. I mean, you know, the tree falls in the forest, but if no one's there to hear it, it doesn't make a sound. Well, now we know. No, of course it doesn't make a sound because there's nobody there. The tree isn't there. The, there's, there's nothing. Unless a human being observes the, uh, the incident, it, you don't have to draw that incident and and what i mean by that is when we started developing games and simulations i don't care if it's for civilian or the military or educational purposes we all did the same thing and i'll give you the quick example some of you guys have already heard this and that is if you've ever played any games and i encourage everybody to play at least one game in their lifetime uh, if you see a mountain off in the distance and you know full well how the game is built and you know your character is never going to be on the other side of that mountain that mountain is just there for decoration the question is, do you build the other side of the mountain and everything that's on the other side of the mountain? No, of course not. You want to conserve resources. You want to conserve processor power. There's some wonderful videos on this uh, that have been uh, covered. And there's a couple that I've ripped that I put on my channel. But that just screams uh, digital. Uh, it screams virtual environment. It always has. Uh, and that is we we see the same things. Basically, what I'm saying is the sa same things we are building into games we see in our world now. That's what the d double slit experiment shows, which is if we're not observing uh, single electrons fired in a certain direction, they act differently. They act like they're, they're not being watched. And you're saying, well, does that mean they're intelligent? No, 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 no. It just means they're programmed. They're hard coded, and that is not Big Bang. You know that is that is absolute intelligent design. It is the, probably the the best instance of intelligent design. Uh, the other thing, two things you want to look into is uh, it's a little tougher to get your head around. One is quantum entanglement, which is the 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 spin, the rotation, the instant rotation between the protons or electrons or whatever it is. Uh, I'm not getting into the details right now, but they happen instantly regardless of distance. And why is that important? Well, what, and what I mean is regardless of distance, it's instant. Meaning there, uh, as f up until very, very recently, we always thought the speed of light was the fastest thing ever, you know, 720 million miles an hour. And now we know differently. Quantum entanglement says there is no speed. Uh, there is no speed limit. Uh, the, it, things happen and that screams uh, also virtual. It screams simulation, but I won't get into exactly why. And then the third thing you want to look into, uh, seriously, you can type this into Wikipedia and that's a fun article and watch some of the videos on it because it blows scientists away. And remember, these are what, this is what science discovered. We didn't do it. And that was the, um, uh, what's it called? It's called Neuroscience and Free Will, which is fascinating. Fascinating. I can sum it up for you really, really quickly. And I know I'm spending a lot of time in this email, but I, I don't get these questions often. And I got to bring this up which is if you look up neuroscience and free will it was a test that was done some years ago where you know bored scientists let's hook up some electrodes some people and have them start tapping things on computer and monitor their brain waves and what they did was they thought they thought they'd get clever and they said okay um when you um think of a number 
type or when you type when you think of a random number type it here but also if there's a stopwatch on the screen keep track of when exactly you thought of a random number so all of a sudden I, i'm trying to think of a number and i think 14 right the instant you think of 14 even before you click the button that says i thought of a number or your whether number whatever number you choose keep track and what they figured out was is that the computer could tell before you even made the decision what the random number is that you were going to make it and you're saying well so what that's an, that's not a big deal it's oh yeah it is because the computer could tell eight seconds before you did it so eight seconds before you even picked a random number the computer knew you were going to pick it and that just and and that just screams predestination and if you don't know what that is look it up and that is <laughs> that you are on a track you're, it's not it's not just a virtual world. You are actually on a. You're not not in a in a, in a simulation. You're in a movie, and you know, a simulated movie or just a movie. And it's the movie's playing out because you've made all the decisions in advance. That's what predestination is, which is why they tie it to free will. The old old the age old question, which is, do you have free will? Yes or no? And people say, of course I, I do. I have free will. I can I can make decisions now. I, I can right now I can make a decision whether to drop this paper on the floor or pick it back up. And he said, Well, yeah. Unless he, you know, unless you're talking about nonlinear time, in which case you made all these decisions in advance and you're just going through it. I, again, use a wonderful line from the Matrix that was missed, and then I swear to God I will get off this because you some of you are probably going, What is he talking about? He's all over the place. Uh, there was a line in the second matrix where Neo was talking to the prophet, you know, when they were feeding the birds. And she, uh, he said, it's a question of, uh, he goes, I can't make that choice, all right, whether or not to kill, let Trinity die. And she, she goes, you didn't come here to make the choice. You've already made it. You come here to understand why you made it. A lot of people miss that. And that was, was it a game he was in or was it just a movie? Anyway. That's where we'll end that particular email. So thank you for letting me ramble there, Don. <laughs> Everybody else probably thinking, wow, pretty heavy for a Wednesday morning. Okay, uh, then we get into math. Curvature calculation correction explained. Hey, Mark, that I will not read all these calculations, but I will read part of it. Uh, hey, Mark, thanks for the read and response in QA emails 113. The curvature calculation correction from 8 inches per mile squared to 10 inches per mile squared is needed because the 8 inches is from performing just half of the full equation. Uh, it only looks long, the, then jump to the attached below graphic. Yes, the 8 inches is 8 tenths of the final result, but it's precisely a 25% error that's quite glaring. And yes, don't worry about going to the 10. Hopefully my 10 was just the average sharp bull ballpark figure for all the ball circumferences out there. I don't know who screwed the pooch on the calculation, but it was horribly magnified with the reemergence of the curvature charts, which clearly display a poor understanding of what we would live on the outside of the imaginary ball. The specific problem is that the 8 inch is based on the dissecting straight line that erases the curvature. This is mathematically called a chord, C-H-O-R-D. The other half of the correct equation adds the curvature back in. I've edited some of the SAR 27 chart and an attached below graphic to explain everything and show the still almost 2% off so-called right math. To sell a little harder, I believe this correction must be made since we are all about the how and where the Globers are wrong, and I think we look terribly foolish without this caliber of feather in our cap, especially if the Globers find it and use it to discredit us, uh, again, correcting them and further exposing their endless frauds. Um, in that vein, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the wrong and right curvature workup based on the 25,000-mile uh, ball. Okay, thank you. And that's from Iggy. Thank you, Iggy. Uh, don't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And that is, we don't get that much pushback, believe it or not, from, from the ball earth people. Mostly because, one, the 8-inch model, we didn't come up with. They came up with, and since it's all over the internet, that's the one we should, I mean, yeah, if you want to change it to kind of a 10 version, that's fine. And if we have to get into, you know, some nitpicky arguments, that's fine. I'll bring this up. I will save this. But... Most of the time, we don't have to worry. Uh, there's some people that, most of the people that I run into, they just leave out the, uh, remember, the average person doesn't even know what inches per mile squared means. 
uh, and which is one of my big arguments of junk food media versus everything else. Uh, people memorize everything from quarterback ratings to who are the finalists on America's Got Talent, but they won't because those are entertaining. Uh, since we haven't made science entertaining really in any way, shape, or form except for space, this the, the calculations, eight inches per mile squared, most people don't know. We have to beat that into them first. And if you start coming at them 10 inches per mile squared, they're just going to come right at you and say, well, everything on the internet says eight so love, you know, love the fact you're spending the extra time on this. We will keep this in our back pocket just in case, but they will never be able to use eight inches per mile squared really against us because uh, really up until a certain, as you know, up until a certain point, and I'll just say 500 miles, it works just fine. And we're, we're good, but thank you. I seriously, love the fact that you're, you're doing this. Moving on. This one's called F.E. on MTV Ridiculousness. Mark, please check out Season 12, Episode 25, Jimmy O and Yang. And is it a movie? He sent me two images. Oh, where he's on the street with a sign around him saying the earth is flat. And let me see here. You can actually watch it. So it's, oh, I'm sorry. The show is called Ridiculousness with Jimmy O. Yang. Season 12, episode 25. You guys want to see it. Jimmy O. Yang joins Rob, Chanel, and Stello to explain how to American. Identify some people who are not actual scientists and hack a butt for some special... I can't see that word. Occasions. Huh. First aired December 28th, 2018. Cool. That's awesome. Again, we're, we're all over the place. We're in the heads of so many people at this point. This one's called Chinese Faked Moon Landing Article on Top of Drudge. Yep, Drudge jumped on this, which was what they call it. Hang on, hang on. Chinese looking for it. Landing on the dark side of moon was faked. Which, by the way, you really shouldn't call it the dark side of the moon. And uh, DITRH was absolutely right that Pink Floyd ruined it for everybody. Because technically, it's just the far side of the moon. It's not always dark, if you believe in mainstream science. Uh, but yeah, Drudge threw that in there, landing. Why, why wouldn't they say it was fake? The Chinese, they're not beaming back any video. Uh, it's 2019. The Americans were doing 30 frames a second in 1969 with a transmitter that had a range of 50 miles. And they were beaming through uh, not only a quarter million miles of space, but then they punched through the Van Allen belts and with perfect accuracy and with 30 frames per second with audio. I was in two, year 2000. I'm trying to download images from the internet with a 288 modem and is taking freaking forever just to get single images. And they're doing 30 frames per second from the moon in 1969. Yeah, totally makes sense. Uh, let's see. This one's called TV interview request. Ooh. Hey, Mark, I'm a producer for the Los Angeles based web TV series called The Fallen State. I'm writing to request an in-studio interview with you to discuss your hypothesis on flat earth and other topics based on spirituality, culture, current events and politics. Fallen State is a highly entertaining and fast-growing show that airs weekly on YouTube. The show covers everything from current events to relationships, race relations, faith, politics, gender, sexuality, human interest stories, societal ills, I haven't heard that term, and much more. We film at Bond Studios in the west side of Los Angeles. There's a lot of momentum behind the Fallen State right now. Great time to join. Uh, recent interviews include Stacy 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 Dash, Amber Rose, uh, which got picked up by Yahoo News, BET, The Daily Mail, Perez Hilton, Vibe, Fox News, Too Fab, and much more. We could love to add you to that list in this upcoming season. Thank you very much and look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. And that's from Travis. And yeah, I'm, I've already made an arrangement with them and I will be going down there and visiting just before the QE 2019 conference, which is the Question Everything conference. Uh, the end of next month in Los Angeles. So I will be visiting them. But thank you, Travis, for reaching out. And if anyone wants to reach out on my behalf, on anyone, I don't solicit anybody. Seriously, I want to keep uh, my potential autobiography intact, which is going to be, I'm just going to call it unsolicited if I can, if it's not taken. And uh, because people, people just call me because I'm easy to find. I put my number on every video. I put my email address in every video, my mailing address, everything. And that's how I got a hold of me. And then once I did a few interviews, oh, here's a, here's a fun one. Uh, this is a 
scam. You'll you guys will like this. So you know normally uh, you get you scam letters from various countries in Africa, uh, but this one this one's a, a neat little little wrinkle on it, and you'll see where I'm going this with this. Okay, so it it's from it's called uh, regarding Detective Rogers, right? And it says. My, it doesn't even address me, right? My name is Detective Rogers. I am a detective with the San Bernardino Police Department in San Bernardino, California. Because <laughs> you want to be redundant. I am contacting you as a part of an investigation. Our department is working wherein it appears some of your identifying information may have been used without your consent. We're currently trying to determine whether the activity we're investigating was approved by you. Could you please reach out to me at your earliest convenience my mobile below is the best number to reach me. Thank you, Detective L. Rogers, San Bernardino, San Bernardino Police Department, work, cell, and email. Right, and then he spoofs an F, uh, San Bernardino, sbcity.org email. And so I write him back, and I'm go of course, uh, the reason why it's a scam is because you're, you're like, oh, the police are asking me about something. Could it be identity theft? And then all of a sudden you realize, it's like, oh, I get it. What you do is you call this guy up, and you think he's law enforcement, and then you he asks you for your, your information. And there you go. And all of a sudden you've just given him your, your information. It's very, very tricky. I will say this. And so I, I write back and I say, you will never find the bodies. Never. And then he writes back and says, Hello, Mark, I'm still trying to get a hold of you. I'm actually working an investigation and need a quick statement from you. If you could reach out to me or provide me with the best number. I am located in Southern California. I believe you reside out of state, which, of course, really throws the whole th a wrench in the things, which I'll say in a second. This is one of the reasons I believe the individual we're investigation, <laughs> grammar screw up, is using your information without your consent. Spelled completely wrong. So spell checker and grammar in the same sentence. Dead giveaway. If it makes you feel more comfortable, feel free to reach out to the San Bernardino Police Department to confirm that I am a peace officer. <laughs> peace officer? Oh my God. Uh, again, I apologize for having to contact you through email. I made several attempts to contact you via phone, which he hadn't. They had not had gotten a single email at all from from this guy uh yeah sorry and then i wrote him back and i said you know confessed everything from human trafficking to uh drug charges to weapon um weapon of uh, mass destruction you know that sort of stuff and i just confessed to all that stuff and i said oh yeah you've totally got me so good you know please you know take me in okay the fact that that a local police department is doing identity theft cross state lines and, you know, he's, there's so many different things that he screwed up here, but I wasn't going to help him out. So I knew that I was really tempted to write back and say, okay, do the whole uh, Vin Diesel thing where it's like, okay, a couple things you could have done better and, and give him, you know, try, because so I try to help people out when I can, but I'm not going to help out trolls. So anyway, if you guys see something like that, please let me know. This one's called Expanding Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I'm a Washingtonian. I'm proud that you and D. Marble are fellow flat earthers here in Washington State. I saw a globe the other day. How can we avoid it? And was reminded of a video I saw years ago by Neil Adams of the expanding earth theory. I agree that the continents do fit together incredibly and undeniably. Has anyone done a model of the flat earth addressing plate tectonics or shown how they fit together on a plane? I would love to see it. Thanks for all your work in opening people's eyes. Spe Peace, John Johnson in P.L. Washington? I know a lot of towns in Washington. I don't know P.E. space. Uh, that doesn't matter. So, uh, yeah, when it comes to plate tectonics, if you know anything about that, uh, and I do believe that still works on a flat Earth, there was a su supercontinent back in the day where all the continents were kind of bunched together, the early versions of the world, and the continent was called Pangaea. And in the flat world, it would just would have been sort of at the center. And then it, it was morphed, it was terraformed and kind of broken apart in different versions. But so it really doesn't work any differently on a flat model than a globe. You know, it was Pangaea, a big supercontinent, then it spread out. So there you go. Although, you know what, let me, let me throw one more thing in there. Real quick, sorry, on this whole continent thing. You want to look at something interesting, which is why the globe model still doesn't make sense compared to the flat model. Plate tectonics work way better on a flat model. Here's why. If you look like a Mercator map, uh, that's that's the best way to look at it. You can look at the globe too, but all the pointy edges, like the bottom part of Florida and Norway and uh, Italy and all the pointy edges of the, the globe model point down. 
They all point south, all of them, which is weird. In fact, you, you really know it different. Take a Mercator map and flip it upside down and look at all the, the, the pointy edges. They're all pointing south. But if you look at it on a flat model, they all point out, which makes way more sense. During terraforming, everything would have been spread organically outwards towards the outer edge. But on a globe, all the literally all the pointy edges point down. Find me a pointy edge that points up. Show me where it is. Moving on. This one's called Sean and John. Hey, Mark, my name's Sean Crawford. I'm part of the photo team, Sean and John. Apart from our endeavors as photographers, we're also creating a new podcast that somewhat mirrors our pers personal photography. Our currently untitled podcast will be interviewing people with unique stories and beliefs. We have already started with Sisters of the Valley, the Marcos, the Adjuster, we would love and try and chat with you or if you can point us to other resources, most specifically on the West Coast of the U.S., that would be incredible. We look forward to hearing from you. Best, Sean. And yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, he they will probably be making a trip up here to Seattle. So I will be meeting with them and who knows, if they get back in time, uh, we may also meet at the QE 2019 conference in L.A. So thank you for that. This one's called Owen is going to debate Eric Dubay. Mark, Owen is going to debate Eric Dubay. I think Owen knows the earth is flat, but he is saying he does not red pill many. Smart guy. I think you and he should do a live talk. He is on every night addictive watching. He lives in uh, Washington State. Uh, and yeah, the video is called Owen Benjamin. I can't be a flat earth person. Uh, yeah, I, I, reached, I reached out to him and said, look, you want to get a hold of me? I'm here. I mean, seriously, he lives where I think he lives in Washington. He's only, uh, even w when I take the ferry, it probably may be two hours from here. So uh, I invited him up and uh, to the island, and but it was real casual. Just I didn't want to put any heavy pressure on him. Hint, hint, Eric, don't, <laughs> don't pressure people and don't badger them in chat. Especially a guy like that. He's, I wouldn't say he's high strung, but again, when he gets a head of steam rolling, get out of his way. Uh, this one's called FENZ. Mark, hope you're well. I'm a flat earther. Oh, I get it. Flat earther from New Zealand, FENZ, and have been one since January of 2018 and love that you are helping people realize about the world we live in. Forgive me for asking, and I'm saying this with sincerity, but are you a shill? I'm still not sure about the word. Boy, have I written this guy back, whether it's good or bad or whatever. Some members say you sold out for some reason. I don't know. Uh, at the Canadian conference, you sounded sincere and genuine. Man, I think I'm making an assumption like those pseudoscientists about you. Sorry. Well, hope to hear from you. Cheers. Uh, P.S. I know the earth is flat and beautiful. Did I write back to him? I did not. Okay, so I will put this in my to-do pile and I will... But I will respond here because every once in a while we'll get this. Uh, people that think I am a shell, where did you hear it from? There's only two guys I know. Well, unless you count Math Powerland, which is a whole other thing. Uh, two guys I know that have spread that rumor that I'm a shill. And by the way, if you don't know what a shill is, please look it up. It's from the original word shillaber, which is carnival's assistant. Um, doesn't you have to be a carnival, though? Um, so if you've ever walked down the street and seen somebody playing three-card Monty, you know, it's like, find the queen, find the queen. And there's some guy behind says, oh, yeah, I totally found the queen and won 20 bucks off him just today. That's what a shill is. A shill is working with the guy that's doing the card trick. Uh, and the only two people, the guy that started this back in the day was Eric Dubay. And it has been for, it, he's the only guy that started this. He started back in 2015. And that's because he had one of his guys contact me and said, and said, okay, we want you to start doing this in interviews. And it's like, what are you talking about? I don't even know who Eric Dubay is. I mean, you know, there were just a few of us doing this back in uh, 2015. And uh, then ODD was listening to Eric, and so he, he convinced ODD, and uh, ODD started spreading it around. And between the two of them, they did, I won't say a lot of damage, uh, you know, any publicity is still something. Uh, for me, I, I'll do the short version. I am not a shill, I'm just a guy living up on Whidbey Island, used to play video games for a living, and then taught proprietary software for 20 years. If you think of a shill, they don't care. I don't care. I hardly even read the comments, to be perfectly honest, uh, because as long as you believe in Flat Earth, you can listen to whoever you want. If you're a big fan of Jaron, Globebusters, Matt Long, uh, Patricia Steer, Karen B, it goes on and on and on and on. Great. Fantastic. You, you don't have to subscribe to my channel. 
And if you don't want to listen to my videos, don't listen to them. Uh, if you think I'm working for the government, great. Where is my grand plan? When is that finally going to be rolled out? Because I've been doing this now, uh, in fact, next month, in a month, less than a month from now, it'll be my four-year anniversary of Flat Earth Clues. I've been interviewed hundreds of times. I've done 13, well, 1,500 videos. So I've blown out like 200 of the old ones just because they were all just old promos. Uh, 1,300 videos is still on my channel, at least. So when am I going to derail it? When am I going to go against Flat Earth? Uh, you got to look at it logically. Uh, what If I am working for the government, what is my overall game plan? Somebody tell me. Nobody's... No, in fact, to this, to this day, the word shill has been thrown around so much and no one's even bothered to say which agency I'm involved in. I mean, is it FBI, CIA, ATF, DOD, Naval Intelligence, KGB? Remember, it doesn't have to be American. So, what is it? So, no, I'm not, not a shill, never have been. But again, don't care. If you, if you believe that I am a shill, fantastic, great. But if you're going to follow, I'll, you know, I'll throw out a little jab. I don't take these often. If you're going to follow uh, Eric and ODD, you got to remember who you're dealing with there. Eric wants all the Jewish people to die, and ODD's got a bit of a past that we don't like to talk about in 2018, hashtag me too. So all I did was make illegal fireworks when I was in university. There you go. Again, if, 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 again, if you're going to follow that rumor, tell me where it came from. Moving on, this one's called satellite verification. Oh, wow, it's kind of a big one. Uh, can I read this? Yeah, okay, let's do this. Uh, Mark, my name is Jim, and I work on mountaintop microwave community communications com uh, com equipment. I'm 51 years old, and I've been in the communications business for 32 years. I looked into flatter situation a month or so ago, and I have no doubt by the things demonstrated with the lack of curvature over water that the earth is flat. I love your videos on YouTube, and by the way, you show you are genuine and intellectually curious. That leaves the questions of the nature of space. The GPS system, I think, will be a fantastic proof set to half-split the problem. Unlike the other geosynchronous satellites that stay put in the sky, the GPS system consists of a constellation of 31 different satellites in constant motion or orbit around the planet. How do you fake that? Or should I say, how do you do a GPS system on a flat Earth? I've been studying the GPS system design intensely, and I have the equipment to verify it. Uh, if it is doing what they say it's doing, I purchased yesterday two specialized antennas tuned to the GPS frequency that will give me no doubt uh, credentials as far as equipment used. I'm a lifelong skeptic ball buster, but, and if someone proposed the same thing to me, I know exactly what I would ask them as far as what they did and what test equipment they used to do it and where. I am in the process of putting together an entire presentation that I would like to for you to share with everyone. In the meantime, I want to give you two teasers that have me stoked. One, the way the system is designed, and I've seen numerous videos and read everything available, there is a huge problem involving simulcasting, which is when two or more transmitters transmit on the same frequency at the same time. I found just one mention of it with a GPS system, and the answer is laughable. This issue should dominate all theoretical talk on explaining how the GPS system works. That is because the satellites are all moving while transmitting. I have spent a lot of my life dealing with simulcast radio systems. They are complicated and hard when they are on mountaintops, that are standing still. Having multiple transmitters moving at, at and away from each other at 800 miles per hour is insane. If each transmitter had their own frequency, that would be a completely different story, but they don't. Two, I did an initial look for any of the satellites this weekend just to try and verify that I could see at least a change in the signal level and possibility, po sorry, possibly a direction of change in the signal source using a directional antenna and a spectrum analyzer tuned to the L1 frequency of 1575.42 megahertz to verify motion in the sky in the right direction, 55 degrees off the equator staggered in six rows. I didn't have the correct antenna, but it should have been at least um, been half ass far as something. I saw nothing, no signal at all from any direction on that frequency, which is a mind blower. I'm not making any claims yet, but the pot is on the stove. Thanks for being the voice of Sandy. I will be in touch. And that's from Jim Gaddy from California. And thank you for that. And I will write you back and say that I read this and I'm looking forward to your follow-up. This one's called Chinese landing on dark side of the moon was fake. Conspiracy theorist claims. That's from the mirror. Yep. The, the mirror did this too. Uh, Chinese landing on dark side of the moon was fake. Conspiracy theorist. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And so that is, that was published in the mirror. 
in the UK. This one's called Nat Geo Video. Hi, Mark, just listened to your strange world. Heard the part about the Nat Geo vid and tried to get it, but kept having difficulties. Do you have it to pass along? Thanks, Kirk. And it was it's interesting that he wrote this because literally one day after he wrote this and I sent him the Nat Geo video, National Geographic finally posted it on YouTube. So you guys now can watch it. I think it's at the top of the charts. Uh, it's talking about flat earthers versus globalists. And that is that is the Nat Geo piece that we shot this last summer in Los Angeles. And, you know, it's me on there. And again, three days worth of shooting where I argued till my voice was cracking. And that's what they, they left us with, was, was that they were, again, it's National Geographic. They're a science-based science backing. And they were the ones that came and said that Flat Earth will bring in the, a new series of Dark Ages. And I said, no, they won't. But they, they weren't having that. This one's called Watch Owen Benjamin Full Show with Conflict. Enjoy stand up on YouTube. Mark, after watching the set where Owen says several times the truth is funny, but lies are not, I give him a year. The globe along with the evolution will be in his routine. Good set. I had no idea he was six foot seven. He really is a truther, Mark. And that's from William. Thank you, William. Yep, Owen Benjamin is really a great way to start out 2019 with Owen Benjamin doing daily podcasts, just railing and bringing up Flat Earth all the time. Can't wait to see what happens when uh, he finally uh, uh, talks to Eric. Oh, please, Eric, don't don't call out too many people because it'll just look bad, but whatever. He's going to do what he's going to do. This one's called the Daily Herald, Everett Poll, Link, and Vid. Great job, Mark, in getting the truth out there. Uh, FYI, we are countering the newspaper's apparent attempt to undermine the seriousness of the movement. Please see Link and have people vote based on the evidence, which is right in front of us, not from the CGI or space fantasy. Link to poll in description. And that's from Dan Faso, and that is a video that he did... Uh, with the newspaper and it's called call to action major online poll vote ASAP Mark Sargent article head herald.net.com and of course he forgot to put flat earth in the title and so I've got to write him real fast and say one real, real quick I go hey Dan hey put flat earth in the title so people don't miss it and i recommend that to anybody uh but thank you dan for doing that and uh um and i will click on that link and 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 vote myself and yeah there was a there was a story they ran they came and visited me on the island uh, the everett herald it's a little a northern seattle newspaper and we did our thing and they weren't the kindest in the world but at the same time, look, any publicity is still free and uh, it was was honest for the most part. I mean, they don't like they don't like Flat Earth. I mean, it was tough to hate me, but uh, it went it went OK. But anyway, they had a poll. You know, do you think the Earth is flat or round or a sphere? So check it out if you get a chance. All you have to do is type in Flat Earth and then my last name. And because I don't think they put Flat Earth in the title, that's why it doesn't show up in the search engines. And you'll see the article from the Herald.net and then you can just go from there. This one's called Canadian Nat Geo article. That's interesting. Canadian Nat Geo. Hello, Mr. Strange. Uh, I see what you did there because my last name is an anagram for one word. Sergeant is an anagram for strange, which I thought was interesting. Uh, I came home to the Canadian National Geographic article in the Alberta Flat Earth Conference this evening and was pleasantly surprised by the writer's description of our general beliefs and the absence of tremendous amounts of mockery. You are very, <laughs> you look very handsome and commanding as per, which is a good thing as you were described as the movement's leader. Thank you, fearless leader. Yours truly, Eddie. Uh, and her, it's her name, Eddie uh, Eddie Cassidy out of Canada. Thank you for that, Eddie. That's That's awesome. And I don't necessarily think I'm, I'm handsome. I used to be cute back in the day, but, you know, uh, age takes its toll. And what, what, what? Oh, yeah. So, but I, there's no there's no digital thing for this yet. I, I, was, I was asking for the link to this. If anyone can find Canadian National Geographic article, which came out in their newspaper just this last week, not the one that was right after the Edmonton conference, I'd love to see it. All right, let's do a few more and let's call, call it good. This one's called Watch This SpaceX's First Human Crew on YouTube. Oh, the horror. Okay, let's see. Let me punch this thing up, waiting for a response. So the title of the video is called This is SpaceX's Very First Human Crew. It's on a YouTube channel called Verge Science with about 650,000 subs. 
and it was put up on January 15th, and uh, yeah, SpaceX's human crew love to see that. You know, where where is it? Where are they going to the moon? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna have to watch it just to. No, don't want to watch it, but I'm gonna. Okay, let's not end on that one. That one's too negative. Let's. How about this one? This one's called, <coughs> excuse me, questions. Hi, is your name Mark Sargent? I am Antonio Carusi. Can you answer some questions? Are there such things as planets? <clears throat> Are stars just small lights? Are there really galaxies out there? Is most of astronomy false? Are there aliens? Yours truly, Antonio Carusi. And I will answer um, no, yes, no, yes. There you go. And you guys can look that up. <laughs> uh, let's do one more. One more. I swear. One more and this will be it. Uh, let's see. Okay, this one's called Sky Photos. Mark, good day, sir. I've been looking up into the sky now for a long time. In fact, way before Flat Earth came on my radar in my travels, I was always, I've always liked taking photos with the 8 megapixel camera on my iPhone 6. What is included are what I consider some of the best shots of not only some of the most crazy cloud formations I've ever seen while traveling the extreme northern California countryside, but also some nice Mount Shasta photos and some of the more brilliant rainbow shots I have personally witnessed. Those are in the weed area of Northern California. Yes, it, I've been to weed, actually, by the way. Yes, it is a town in California. Go for, I, have been, I have been to weed uh, when I was out visiting uh, Mount Shasta years ago. Some of the chemtrails showing perspective of what the sun really must be doing if you stop and think about it. Then there is the a lake bed that was filled with water last winter uh, or the winter before that is 18 miles wide from one end to the other. It is located just north of Milford, California as you drive down Highway 398 and 40 miles shy of Reno as you drive from Susanville, California. Thank you, by the way, for the exact location of that. I don't see one bit of curve, and the 18 miles there should be 216 feet of curve, and I just don't see it. Maybe you will, Mark, and you can tell me where my calculations were wrong. <clears throat> anyway, please look at these photos, blah, 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 um, and that's it. So uh, I, I will look at those photos, I, I swear. I'll put those, that my thing to do pile. And, and if you guys send me fun photos, if you send me some really interesting photos, as you know, uh, I will probably use them for, for thumbnails and stuff. Anyway, that's it. So let's call this one good. Thank you for everybody that wrote in. You can send your emails to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.